Do you have a skeleton in the closet? If yes what is it? What is the secret you never told anyone? My whole professional life is built on a lie and it's about ready to come down. When I was 22 I was in a bad way, halfway through my bachelor's degree, but with a building addiction to opiates and some mental health issues. Summer of that year I was in a bad car accident, in addition to broken bones throughout my body, my head went through the window and my face received severe lacerations that required hundreds of stitches to close and left me looking very rough. As tough as that was to deal with, I also now know that I sustained a traumatic brain injury that left me very confused, angry, and overwhelmed by life in general. I wanted to keep up appearances, so after taking 3 months off to recover I tried to go back to school. Within the first week I knew I couldn't handle it. Too many questions about what happened, too much anxiety, and I had lost pretty much all my coping skills. When I got overwhelmed, which happened often, I would feel sick and scared and literally forget where I was and what I was doing. It was frightening and embarrassing, especially for someone like me who had always had high expectations placed on my shoulders by those around me. I had a baby with sperm donated from a man who advertised on Craigslist. If my very religious family found out it wasn't an accident I would be completely shunned and disowned. I stole a bunch of money from my in-laws. In my mind, I feel justified and have tenuous plans to make it right one day when I can. However, if it was found out my wife would probably kill me and I'd never be able to face my in-laws again. I killed my family. One night about a decade ago, when I was 8 years old, I couldn't sleep at night, so I was just walking around the house, looking for something to do. It was winter, so there was fire in the fireplace. I started playing with it, throwing stuff into it, watching how it burns. At one point, a big log rolled out of the fireplace. As a kid, I started to panic. I tried to cover it with a blanket, then ran out to the kitchen to get some water. When I came back, the whole living room was on fire. It was a wooden house. I was terrified, ran out of the house. Literally within a minute, it was burning like crazy. My older sister, younger brother, and mom who was pregnant at the time, all died instantly. Dad was working a night shift. No one really questioned me. My room had window, and I said I left through it when I saw the fire. The real cause has never been found. My dad was absolutely devastated, and a few weeks later shot himself. I found his body. I've been living with my grandparents ever since. No one knows what really happened that night. I spent half of my life with therapists. I hate myself, have a severe depression, attempted a suicide a while ago. When I was about 5 years old, my sister, 2 years old, and I were in the backyard in a kiddie pool. When my mom went inside, I attempted to drown my sister. After I saw her lifeless, I realized that it was a big mistake, pulled her out of the pool, and called for my mom. Luckily she knew CPR, and she was life flighted to the hospital. My mom thanked me for saving her, pulling her out of the pool. Next week was my birthday. The police, firefighters, paramedics came to my house to give me gifts and celebrate my birthday. To this day 20 years later, I still think about it. I remember the day so vividly, not a soul knows the real truth. I secretly had a relapse, more like a slip, several months ago, after being clean from meth plus heroin for over a year. It lasted one day and I think helped me stay clean afterwards, but if my family and friends found out, it would undo years of hard earned trust and progress with them. I had moved out of my apartment to try and get clean once and for all. My drug had always been heroin, but meth and benzos were also a bit of a hobby of mine. So as my dad and I are packing up my place to move back in with him and my mom. Things are just being thrown into random boxes, stuffed into bags, anything we can do to get the task done and done quick. I should add that I had a ton of little hiding places for my drugs in my place, and as drug users do, sometimes I forgot where I put my stash. Fast forward a few months, I'd been clean for about a year, the longest I'd ever been, got my own place again, etc, when I'm rummaging through old boxes of things that I had hastily thrown together when moving. Lo and behold I spotted a small cup that McDonald's had at one point given away in Happy Meals. 
I felt that cup like a rock in my lungs. I knew what I would find inside even before that sickly sweet smell wafted over me. Bad decision number one. Instead of walking the whole thing straight to the dumpster, I looked. I looked. Smelled. Felt. And knew that day was the day. I'll spare you the details of what goes on next, but it involves smoking meth out of tinfoil and a whole heaping ton of regret. In hindsight this night was a good thing, as it really helped me along the way to being happily clean, not just frustratingly restrained. It has been almost exactly one year past the incident I described above, and I'm feeling really good in general. I have the kind of happiness that makes you smile in the car, just driving down the road. And what's even better is, that happiness kept getting better, and reinforcing itself as it drove me to make good decisions. Life was, and still is, good. When I was 23 I finally found out, why we would always leave the family parties, if a certain great uncle showed up. Turns out he had molested his own children for years. Then he adopted younger children every few years, and did it more. He eventually went to jail in the 80s and 90s and people would still take his kids to visit him in jail. They hated it. I want my sister to die. Physically I couldn't kill her, I'm not homicidal. But I wouldn't be upset if she were wiped off the earth under any circumstance. She was horrible to me as kids, but then she changed when we got older and we became very close. I noticed though that she always had some kind of victim around. A couple years ago I found out her daughter had been repeatedly raped by her stepdad, my sister's husband. My sister knew about the abuse and did nothing until my niece found help on her own. It's destroyed my family. We all hate my sister to some degree but no one as much as me. And I have to pretend to be nice because she has two little girls with her husband and I need to stay close to them. I have my niece living with me and she needs to have a life with her sisters. She and her mom are no contact. So I suck it up and deal. But I constantly wish my sister would die and leave us in peace. The girl who was my best friend and my fiance at one point committed suicide. I have proof that she faked it and she's now living with a very rich 50 year old man. She's 21. I know these people and she didn't even leave the city. Everyone thinks she passed away and there is even a tombstone with her name on it. I don't know whose body is in there but it's not hers. Two years ago for 4 months I was an escort slash sugar baby, money given to a mistress in my country is considered a gift and tax free on her part. I needed the money badly, I hadn't eaten a proper 3 meals for a while and couldn't get work at all. My first week I made $2000 for a weekend's work. On the outside, I'm a happily married 30 something, about to buy a house, in sync with my wife on most things like religion kids that things will get better for us etc in reality i'm a deeply depressed secret alcoholic which i fear is already adversely affecting my health but i can't stop don't believe in any higher power anymore and derive little or no pleasure or satisfaction from anything most of this started with a sudden and untimely death of my mom and some other family drama that happened around the same time while i was in university I powered my way through there, because I was encouraged to by those around me, even though I wanted so badly to drop out. This is also about the time I started abusing alcohol, I barely drank at all before. My family is rather scattered now, living in different states. My wife and I are close, but I have been unwilling, unable, to find or make new meaningful friends as an adult in the city I moved to for a job. I'm so stressed, I feel pins and needles in my brain slash head and tongue constantly, and drink heavily, 5 to 10 drinks slash units per day most of the time, sometimes more, I can hold off, if I'm traveling or around family, or in a situation, where I can't drink at all, I don't even get really that drunk visibly anymore, which is why, I think, I hide it well from my wife, I don't know what to do, tried therapy back in the day, and meds, didn't seem to help. I just am trying to make life okay for the people around me who I don't want to see be like me inside, mostly my wife. But beyond that I feel like I have totally missed the boat and am past satisfaction or having any meaningful place in the world. I'm in serious debt because of a drug addiction I used to have of which my family didn't know I had. I'm almost 2 years clean now 
but I can hardly pay any bills I have, and I'm afraid to ask any family member for money, because I know I can't pay them back in the near future. Edit. THNX for all the kind words guys and gals. Sadly here in the Netherlands declaring bankruptcy isn't as easy you have to have certain points going for and against you to actually declare it as far as I know. As for the people talking about sending something to help. PLZ if you want to help send it to some sort of charity that helps addicted to get and stay clean. Because for me, even though I have it rough the people still fighting this have it 10x rougher. My stepbrother repeatedly molested AMD raped me from age 11 to 16. I got pregnant, and it was definitely his, because I was a virgin otherwise. When I told him he took me into the woods for a walk, to talk he said, and then shoved me down a very steep rocky hill that had tree trunks and roots poking out everywhere. He raced to the bottom, before I could even consider trying to get up, and bashed my stomach with a rock. Then, he left, left me literally dying at the bottom of a hill, where noon would have walked down, bleeding from a slice across my scalp, that required 187 staples to close, my stomach was split open, and rib bones broke, and of course the baby didn't survive. There was blood everywhere, and I was in and out of reality, I thought I was climbing to heaven, when I was delusional, but cold didn't move, when I became remotely conscious. It turns out that, when I thought I was climbing to heaven I was climbing my way up the hill. I made it to a neighbor and he rushed me to the air. I stayed in IQ for 6 months. When I was able to talk my brother was in the room constantly. So I lied, I said I was getting chased by a dog, and lost my footing and fell, and that as I stumbled up I fell on rocks and trunks of the tree. So that's my story. My oldest son committed suicide in 2015. He shot himself in the head. Every day I talk myself out of putting myself in dangerous situations where I could possibly be killed or hurt because I miss him so badly and want to be with him. When I was 15 I tried to kill myself. My parents were out of town for the weekend and on that Saturday night I went into their medicine cabinet and took an ungodly amount of every pill in there. To this day I have no idea what I took, wrote out a long drawn suicide note, locked my door and fell asleep on my bed. Sunday morning my parents came home much earlier than I expected. I had left a small desk lamp on in my room and when my parents got home they tried to get into my room to turn off the light. I was obviously unresponsive and my parents freaked out so much that my dad broke down the door to my room. My dad shook me awake asking me a million questions and grilly like why was the door locked, why I wasn't responding, and what was wrong with me. I groggily lied and told them I was super tired and didn't feel good. They hesitantly believed me and left my room. When they left I grabbed the note and destroyed it, went out into the living room and cried on my mom's shoulder for what felt like hours. When she asked me what was wrong I just told her I had a really bad weekend and nothing else. To this day my parents joke about how I sleep like the dead, not knowing how close I was to actual death. I have never told my parents what happened that weekend or how they unknowingly saved my life. To this day I still own that little desk lamp that I left on that night and turn it on whenever I'm feeling depressed as a reminder that all you need is a little light to get you through the darkest of times. This was 16 years ago next month. I blame myself for one of my best friends passing away. He lived across the country but I stopped talking to him when we both delved way too far into hard drugs and I blamed him for it secretly. A year later he was found dead and the last time I saw him I was barred out on Xanax. I'll never forgive myself for that. I could and should have been there for him. I would probably never consider myself an atheist, but I certainly don't believe in many of the core tenets of my professed religion and I have very serious doubts about most of the others. The biggest problem is I've come to these conclusions only after recently marrying my very conservatively religious wife and taking a job at said religious institution as a minister. I'm in a bad place right now. When I was going to school we were really poor. My mom would regularly be in tears about bills. I used to sneak my lunch money back into their possession by hiding it in laundry, jackets, cars, or her purse. They were always so happy and relieved to find extra cash they had forgotten about. I've lost weight in the past year and have been exercising and packing healthy lunches for work. My friends and coworkers comment about my weight loss and fitness level. 
but I dread my days off, because then I'm home alone, and I binge eat massive quantities of food and throw it all up. Multiple times throughout the day until my husband comes home. I'm an RN and I'm painfully aware of how I'm damaging myself.